do it, but he did it. Come on, sing. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. Lift him up. Lift him up. All you got to do is lift him up. Lift him up. All you got to do is sing. Lift him up. All you got to do is lift him up. Let's go back to the top resurrection.
Jesus died. Jesus died. And he rose again. And he got rose up out the grave. Got 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 up out of the grave. Got up out the grave. With power in his hands. Power in his hands. He's got all power in his hands. Nothing that God can do. Power in his hands. Power in his hands. Power in his hands. Oh, he's alive. He's alive. He's in my head. He's in my head. He's in my head. you to hear it. Because sometimes when the Lord is about to rescue you from something, he comes in strong. Real strong. Like Melvin of the temptations. Coming strong. I'm going to serve him. By myself. Hallelujah. I'm going to love him if no one else. Because right. I believe it. Oh, believe it. Yes, I believe it. Oh, believe it. 
Sometimes when you get to singing and others come in on the music. Oh! Sometimes they come in. Sometimes they just come in and say, okay, if you can believe, I got to believe too. Yes, I believe it. Yes, I believe it. Oh, yes, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I believe it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I believe it. If you believe it. For Mary. Thank God for Mary. Don't you cry, Mary.
Come on, y'all sing with us. Don't you cry, Mary. Don't. don't you cry, Mary. Don't cry. Oh, oh, oh. Your son, Jesus, he had to die. We've been begging. We've been begging to Gonna come in. But joy is gonna come in the morning light. Let's go back to the top. Don't you cry, Mary, don't cry. Don't you cry, Mary, don't cry. Oh, oh, oh. your son Jesus, he had to die. Come on, sing with us. Don't you cry, Mary, don't cry. So you know, so you know, so you know. You gotta lift your voice. So you know, so you know. Okay. So you know, so you know. Come on. Amen. God bless you on this great Easter Sunday morning. It is an honor to have you in our presence. I do thank God for each and every one of you. 
on this glorious, beautiful Easter Sunday morning. We got so much to thank him for. And it's such an honor to be in the house of God. And it's an honor to be in your presence this morning. Amen. Amen. Sometimes words cannot even come close to expressing our thankfulness to God. Good as he been to us. Amen. God will make a way out of no way. I tell you. And I give him praise, glory, and honor. Can you cut the AC on for me, please? I appreciate it. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? And I believe the best is what? Well, the AC is about to come. Amen. Amen. We give God praise and glory. Amen. Amen. I think we have some announcements. Amen. Do we have some? We have some announcements. So feast your eyes on the monitors. Amen. Stop by Sunday School. It starts at 10 a.m. Have your children stop by Children's Sunday School. It starts at 10 a.m. All members can participate in our Firm Foundations class. It starts at 10 a.m. and we'd love to see you there. Do you want to be more involved? Women's Fellowship, also known as the Women of Pearl, provoking excellence, always revealing love. We're meeting every fourth Saturday at 10 a.m. Please see Pastor Drew for more information. Come out and be a part of an on the move. Calling all the brothers. Come on out to Men's Fellowship every third Saturday at 11 a.m. And let's face your toughest decisions with guys who's been there. You'll find support, encouragement, and brotherhood. Come join the youth ministry where young adults demonstrate the purpose, power, and principles of the kingdom of God. Lights, camera, action. Do you like social media? Do you like video? Come join us on the media team. See Elder Dwayne or Venice Nikki. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord and join the worship team. If you're interested, come see Apostle Smith. Bring your children to Children's Church where they'll learn about prayer, worship, and the Word of God. Join us every Wednesday night for Bible study at 7.30 p.m. Here's today's Children's Church Coach. Exercise is good for the body, and we're walking every second Saturday at Coleman Place Elementary School. Come join us and see Deaconess Michelle for more information. Do you want to take your knowledge to the next level? Enroll in Faith and Action Theology School. See Apostle Smith for more information. Take a look at our upcoming events. The Women of Pearl are hosting a relaxing women's retreat to Massa Nutton Resort in Harrisburg, Virginia from June 28th to June 30th. Don't forget to make your payments. See Elder Louise, Deaconess Gwen, or Deaconess Jamela for more information. We thank all you wonderful ladies who decided to come on this trip. Today is our Easter extravaganza. It'll be held during our morning service and all children 13 and under can participate in this egg hunt. There'll be games, food and drink, and loads of fun. Your children won't want to miss this. It's time to show off your skills at our talent contest. We'll be hosting it on April 26th at 6.30. There'll be prizes for both our children and adult winners. Scan the QR code on your screen for more information. Pick up your copy of the penetrating power of the word of God by our very own Apostle Marvin Smith. You can find a copy at Amazon and Barnes and Noble. This is Women's History Month, and today we're celebrating Pastor Denise Smith, phenomenally her. Pastor Denise worked for the government for over 40 years. She's a veteran, entrepreneur, wife, mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. She is a boss. 
Her greatest loves are her children, Danice, who is a lawyer, Donna, who is a radiologist, and Vincent, who is an entrepreneur. Donna blessed her with two beautiful grandkids, Ayana and Neve. Pastor Jamar blessed her with two grandkids, and Faith blessed her with even more precious grandchildren. And she has a great-grandson named Ezekiel. Let's go back. Pastor Denise loves her mother, Alberta Armstrong. Her mother always held a special place in her heart, and may she rest in heaven. A young Denise prayed to God, and she believed that he confirmed there was a calling on her life because the sky opened up and the sun came out. She was a model. She is fun loving. And she's adventurous. Pastor Denise graduated from FIA Theology School and Tidewater Community College. She's an entrepreneur with multiple businesses, Jonas Creations and Alberta's Haven. Pastor Denise has two sisters whom she loves and cherishes. She also loves her family. She was married to her true love, Apostle Marvin Smith, in January 2011. Two friends became one. She believes a woman should always love herself. And back in the day, she won the Faith in Action beauty pageant. She still looks good. We love her. And we love celebrating her. We show up for her. Pastor Denise Smith, today we honor you. Faith in Action, join us in celebrating Pastor Denise Smith. Pastor Drusilla, because you weren't here yesterday, we did your last Sunday, we did your presentation. We honor you with your flowers on today. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Easter. I would first like to honor God, honor the man of the house, first lady, and every member, leaders. I'm just here to emphasize on some additional announcements. Um, happy Resurrection Day, egg, what is it, egg strag, strag, straganza, today for the kids doing um, children church. So, um, April the 7th is building fun. And then April 26th, it's going to be our F5A talent talent show contest that's going to be held at 6:30 with just $25 registration fee. First prize is 300, second prize is $100, and the third prize is 50 for adults. And first prize will be 300, second prize is $100, and the third prize is $50 for the kids. Um, June 28th, women retreat. 
if you're able to attend, please attend. This resort is going to be in um, Harrisburg, Virginia. Cost is only $4.50 for the room and food. And to also announce the new theology class is going to start within two weeks. All that are interested, please see Apostle Marvin Smith. Thank you. I just demonstrated is you at home waiting to hear his voice. Just like you waiting to hear the next voice, which was mine. But how many of y'all know it's a good thing to just sit and wait to hear his voice? Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of y'all thought I didn't know what I was doing, but I thoroughly knew. Amen. I got a, something else I wanted to give my beautiful, lovely wife. I put a lot of thought into it. Amen. And when I saw it, it jumped out at me. And I said, I got to get that for my wife. Says, because I try to get things I know she loves and like. Amen. So when I saw there was a lot of thought put into it. How many of y'all know sometimes you got to put thought into a gift? Amen. And so I said, I got to get that for my wife. Huh? It's just a bunny with an egg in it. But I know she likes stuff like this. I had to get that. Happy Easter. Come on, look at it. It look real, doesn't it? Somebody shout glory to God. Isn't God wonderful? Let me tell you something. Sometimes it's good to be thoughtful over things that's not that expensive. Just give your spouse or someone whom you love something that you know that they would like. It don't have to cost a lot of money. You know, I hear a lot of brothers say, well, I don't have a lot of money to go out of town or do this and that. It doesn't cost anything to go to ocean, down on the waterfront and just walk on the, on the beach or sit and just look at the waves with your beautiful one. I didn't get too many amens. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you at home, do something special for your spouse, your mother, or whomever you love. Does not have to cost a lot. It's always the what? Thought that counts. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Well, it's time and offering time. And I know you're excited to get that resurrection seed. But I tell you, I want to thank God for each and every one of you that participated and came out on yesterday. We had a wonderful time. Come on, give God some praise. We had a time yesterday. You weren't there. You missed the treat. Hey, Amen. It was just an awesome time of celebration. And Bishop Johnson really blessed us on yesterday. Come on. Didn't he bless us? My God. I just, I just thank God for the man of God. I really do. Amen. So thank God for each of you that came out. And those of you that sold a, a good Friday seed to me, I want to thank you in your presence. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Well, we already know why he died. I want you to get your Bibles real quick and turn over to Psalms. Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Somebody shout glory to God. Psalms 103. This is a powerful verse of scripture. And I'm sure most of you already know it. I quoted sometime, not all of it, but a good portion of the uh, beginning of it. Psalms 103, if you dare say, man, right in the middle of your Bible, you can't miss it. Amen. Psalms 103, and I'm going to read it, starting at the first verse. If you have it, shout glory. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Do what? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget now what? I'm going to read that part again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not what? 
some of his benefits. Most of them. It says all of his benefits. Somebody say all of his benefits. Amen. I had to say that because I don't, I don't want you to forget one of the benefits of the Lord is tithes and offerings. When you sow tithes and offerings, there are benefits that come with it. When I was selling insurance, when I first uh, got out of the military, I was selling insurance. I didn't do well. Amen. And I came to the conclusion after a few uh, rejections, maybe a, uh, quite a few rejections, I came to the conclusion that uh, selling insurance wasn't my thing. Amen. But I asked the guy that was sale just about every time he went out. I said, man, what are you doing? You sell you. I, I mean, come on. You're the best seller in the whole company. Can't nobody touch you. And he said, he said, Marvin, he said, all you have to do is concentrate on the benefits. I said, whoa, that makes a lot of sense. Concentrate on the benefits. And then I went with my, my grandson to, to purchase a vehicle. And I never forget how the closer, you got to get this now. Some of y'all going to miss it. I never forget how, how suave the closer was. The closer told me all the benefits, told the, the two of us all the benefits that came with an extended warranty. But guess what he didn't tell us? How much it would cost. How many of y'all getting it? And then he said this, your payment is only blank. And you got all these benefits. Now, one time did he mention how much it costs. How many of y'all get, did y'all get that? And I said, sir, come on now. How much is this extended warranty going to cost? And when he said the price, I said, good gracious of life. He said, but it's all in the payment. How many of y'all getting what I'm saying? Well, we got a benefit package that come with giving, sell, uh, when we give God our tithes. We got a, bit, a benefit package, and guess what? He didn't try to add anything. All he told you was, my son died for you. Do you believe it? Do you believe I gave you a measure of faith? Do you believe it? Do you believe that I rebuke the divine for your sake? Do you believe it? That's one of your benefits. Do you believe that every sickness in this earth dimension that's in the earth and comes in the earth, the price has already been paid? Do you? Do you believe it? I'm going to show you a powerful scripture that every preacher is going to get, especially mine here at Faith in Action. In 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter, I'm about to show you something that's going to, if you, if, you, if you read it and meditate on it when you get home, you're going to understand some things. 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter. When you get it, say amen. And every preacher is going to get this. If you're at home and you're a preacher, you're about to get this. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm going to get it. I mean, somebody, somebody say it from your heart. Say, I'm going to get it. Everybody say, you're just a mere man, preacher. Say, you're just a mere man, apostle. Say, apostle, you're just a mere man. I want you to get this. Look at, look at this 13th verse and, that, and watch and see it on the bless you. For this cause also think we God without ceasing because when ye receive the word of God, which ye've heard of us, receive it not as the word of who? Shout real loud, loud, not as the word of apostle. Let me hear, I can't hear you. Not as the word of apostle. I can't hear you on this side. Say, not as, as the word of apostle. Because apostle just a mere man. Say it. Apostle just a mere man. But then look what it says, the latter part of it. It says, but as it is in truth, the word of who? It is who? which effectually worketh also in you that what? That do what? How many believers in here say amen? Say it like you mean to say, I'm a believer. Say it like you mean to say, I'm a believer. Anytime a man of God get up to minister the word of God, he's just a mouthpiece for God himself. Somebody shout glory to God. But if you receive it as if it came from a man, then hey, 
<laughs> How many of y'all know then a lot of times your faith cannot work? It's, it, it's stagnant. How many believe that? But if you know it is the word, if you really know it is the word of God, that when you give your tithes, you already know that you get the benefits from doing it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, give God a praise. Give him a praise. Oh, oh since you asked, since you asked, turn over to the book of Mark since you asked. Turn over the book of Mark. Seems like you might need a little bit more proof. Turn over to the book of Mark, the last chapter in the book of Mark. Somebody say, I might need some proof. Say just a little bit more of it. Some of y'all quietly didn't go breakfast this morning. Amen. Mark, the 16th chapter. Everybody say, this is word. In the beginning was the word, and the word with God, and the word was? Look what it said in Mark, the 16th chapter. 16th chapter, look at the last verse. And they went forth, just like Marvin Smith and all these preachers here, and we preach and we teach the word everywhere. The Lord work, working with them, doing what? Say it loud, say confirming the word. With what? I'm getting more from this side than I'm on this side. More people on this side than it is on that side. If the people over here will cooperate with this side over here, then this side will be just as loud as that side. Because when there's unity, we make the devil mad. So let's bring the sides together. And if both aisles just came together, whoop, they are one. Somebody say, God confirms the word with signs following. Say, God, my God, confirms the word with signs following. I just want you to get it. I want you to get it. I really do. I really want you to get it. I'm telling you, I've been there sick to the bone. Anxiety at one point. I was running down the street, running from myself because I heard something in my car. That scared me, and I thought somebody was in my car and pulled over on the side and started running down the street as if somebody was after me when whatever was after me was in me. Back then, they had phone booths, and I hid in the phone booth. Are you getting this? Some preachers have been through something that when they get up to minister to you, they're ministering from their heart. Because they want you to get it. You don't ever come to church to sit. You come to get. Because what you get in church is going to help you fight the devil outside of church. Don't let nobody fool you. Everybody in this church going to confront a demon. See, everybody don't want to hear this. But this is the word of God. Everybody at one time or another is going to have something that come in their life that they don't want. And the only way you can get it out sometime is through utilizing the word of God. Because God confirms his word with signs following. Are you ready to give? Somebody say, I'm ready. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand real high. We'll make sure you get one because we don't want you to miss your blessing. Amen. This offering today is going to be a powerful offering. And I believe God going to multiply it back to you. I didn't hear the God. I didn't hear the Lord say that. I'm telling you that. Amen. I believe with all of my heart, God is going to multiply it back to you. Amen. If you need an envelope, raise your hand so they can see your hand. Amen. We'll make sure you get one. Amen. Somebody shout glory to God. Amen. Can't nobody do you like who? Amen. If you got an envelope and you're ready to give, amen, I want you to stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. Somebody say he's a good God. Oh, Lord, I left my ties back there. Somebody say he's a good God. I want you to take your seed, your offering, your tithe, your offering, to put it on your heart. And say real loud, this is a heart thing. And say, Lord, I love you just that much. That I want to obey you. You gave your son Jesus for me. I not only honor you because of it. I honor you because I love you. Thank you, Father. Shout real loud, I am the head. I am not the tail. 
I'm above, I'm not beneath. I am royalty. Each and every day of my life, that is becoming a revelation. You can't put me down, because you can't put royalty down. When you really know who you are, and I know who I am, I am royalty. You can't hold my past on me. My past been forgiven. Because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has already made a way. My sins are in the sea of forgetfulness. My sins are in the sea of forgetfulness. God don't remember them no more. I know who I am. I raise my hands to Jesus. I raise my hands to Jesus because I know who I am. As you sit, give God a hearty amen. Say it again. Say amen. If you, amen. If you got a card, you can see my wife in the corner over here. You have a credit, credit card. Amen. And we want to we wanna thank God. We want to thank God as you continue to play. We want to thank God in the name of Jesus for Brother Anthony that graduated this week. There go his beautiful wife, Kelly. Graduated this week from the United States Army. Come on, you can do better than that. I used to be a drill sergeant at Fort Jackson. He, was, he graduated at Fort Jackson. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, daughter. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Y'all know the song, y'all can help me sing it. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Yes. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. in the back. Amen. Amen. So I don't know who's going to win, but good luck to all of you. We're going to dismiss all the children to the rear because there's a lot of candy going to be coming out of it. Watch your sweet tooth. A lot of candy going to be given out back there. So 
Somebody shout glory to God. Come on, y'all. Thank God for the kids. Thank God for the kids. Thank God for the kids. Somebody shout hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. And can't nobody do you like Jesus. Somebody shout nobody. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. We're going to do something a little different in here this morning. I'm going to, I think a lot of my preachers went in the back, didn't they? There's a lot, there's a lot, of, my, there's a lot of my preachers going in the back. Carol and Ella Mayo, okay. Well, I got three, three, one, two, three. I'm going to have these three up here. They're going to come and give you a five-minute excerpt of what they ministered on this week because they did such a fantastic job. If you didn't hear them, you missed the treat. They covered everything. One thing about these preachers, when they minister on those five sayings of Jesus, you got to come with something when you come up here. Amen. So they hit, they hit everything. They hit everything. I'm telling you, they don't miss nothing. They was coming forth with those golden nuggets through this week. I tell you, I was like, man, they, they hitting it on all, all cylinders. So they're going to come and give you a five minute excerpt. They're going to watch the clock too, because some of them don't watch the clock. Amen. And they're going to give you a five-minute excerpt. They're going to bless you. If you at home, I want you to hold on and buckle your seatbelt. Because they're about to come up here and bless you like you've never been. Well, you've been blessed before, but let's say you go, a greater blessing. Come on, somebody say the word is good all by itself. But before we go any further, before I bring them up, I cannot forget to have Elder Louise to come up and greet all of these visitors Asking them for their name, church affiliation, and who invited them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. We want to say happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Praise God. And at this time, we want to acknowledge our first time guests. We are asking you to please stand if you choose to. And we're asking you to give us your name, your church affiliation. And who invited you at this time? Praise God. Okay. Don't be shy. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The one with the beautiful white blouse on. Praise God. You can go ahead. Bless God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming today. Praise God to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Will there be anyone else? Come on. Don't be shy. All right. Okay. God bless you, beautiful one. Yes. Yes. Bless God. Amen. And happy belated birthday. Praise the Lord. Will there be anyone else? Yes, yes, ma'am. Good morning. Amen. Bless God. You're welcome. Yes. Bless God. 
Bless God. Thank you for sharing. Praise God. Come on, give him Thank some you. praise. Come on, Amen. come on, give him some Amen. praise. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. And since Ella Louise is up, she's going to be the first one to give the five-minute segment. All right. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I ministered on Luke 20, 23 and 34, and that was the last saying that Jesus said when he was on the cross, praise God. He said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. And I was sharing also to, in him saying that, uh, it also spoke of the darkness that came upon the land uh, for three hours. And that was from noon until three o'clock, praise God. And um, that, uh, that darkness, and I also brought out that darkness always preceded death back in the Old Testament time. And a matter of fact, it happened during one of the plagues of the nine plagues that God had sent when he was trying to get Pharaoh to let his people go. So, and you, it would make you think, well, why was the darkness there for three hours? And I brought out the reason why, because it was a process. First of all, Jesus took on our sin. And Jesus was one that he knew no sin. He became sin that knew no sin. So in the three hours of darkness, praise God, he was taking on all of our sin. And you said, well, well, you know why, you know, couldn't it have been just a little bit quicker? No, because it was a process. And that's like us when we're going through something or whatsoever. There's a process that God take us through, praise God. And in that process, God is depositing, changing, transforming whatsoever it is that you need in that process. So in that process, it was sin. Three hours. Three hours, praise God. And, it, you know, and another thing, too, I thought about this after I brought that message. How, it, it somehow Jesus knew when three hours was up. There was nobody standing there with a, with a watch. Said, so, okay, three o'clock, time up, let's go. But he knew when the process was over with. And the thing about it is he didn't come out of it too early or too soon or too late, but right on time. And another thing I thought about it, too, that everything God did, it was a timing. Every second, every minute. So at the end of 3 o'clock, and when he said, Father, and to thy hand, I commend my spirit, praise God, the veil in the temple split from top to bottom. Yes. And the reason why, because spiritually and after there was a barrier between God and man. And when he commend his spirit into the hands of the Lord, it was split and that give, gave us access into, into the holy of holies, praise God. We can come before him now, because see back in the Old Testament time, the priest had to go in there with the blood and sprinkle the blood on the altar for the sins of the people. But now, not so now, now because he has become our redeemer, our savior, we can go to him and ask him for the forgiveness of our sins. But the main point I brought out in that message is because there were some, some people back in our time, in the late 1500s or whatsoever, like Martin Luther and Jan Hutz, you know, that they uh, was persecuted for standing for, for the truth of the word. And so I said, well, what was the one thing concerning Jesus? Martin Luther and Jan Hutt. It was commitment. Jesus, come God on. God want us to be committed. Commit. Yeah, there you go. So what, what was she trying to tell all of us? What can we take out of what she just said? And I'm going to prophesy to you. And the Lord didn't tell me. I'm just going to prophesy to you. The Lord didn't tell me. Now he didn't tell me. I'm just going to tell you. Because see, we can say things that be not as though they were. And we can decree and declare. But I'm telling you, based upon what she said, think about it. You're going to come out. I don't know what you're in right now. But based upon what Jesus did, you're coming out. You may think you're shackled. You may think you are handcuffed. You may think that you are in prison. But I'm telling you this morning. Easter Sunday morning, you are coming out if you can believe that. God is letting you know. Listen, listen attentively.
effectively because you may hear something prophetic that deals with what you're going through. Uh -huh. And how many of y'all know some things you have to catch? But some things are caught. Amen? We haven't advertised it yet, but we're going to have uh, some teachers doing Sunday morning service for those that are 13 to 17. Amen? So you can, you know, get a little bit more into the word of God on your level. Amen? So when you do come up in here and on, at the age of 18, you can grasp a lot of what's being ministered to you. Amen. Yes. So don't forget that. Amen. Amen. The next voice coming is going to be the voice of the oldest is always last because we honor them. Would be uh, the voice of my son, Elder Leroy McKenzie. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. And we give God praise. Uh, my... Uh, my scripture was in uh, the book of John in the 19th chapter, verses uh, 26 and verse 27, where Jesus saw that his mother and the uh, disciple that whom he said that he loved, John, was standing there at the foot of the cross. Now, I want you to get that Jesus' disciples, they ran from fear. They scattered. Amen. But. The two that loved him, and I'm sure that they loved him, but fear gripped them. But his mother and John, the disciple, who he said that he loved. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You don't love, you don't leave something that you love. Amen? But, with, but Jesus saw his mother's face. He looked, saw his mother's face. He saw the concern. He saw the pain, the anguish on his mother's face. A mother that is about to lose her child. Amen. And Jesus with a compassionate heart, even in the midst of pain and anguish that he was going through, he saw it fit to care and have concern about his mother. And the same concern that Jesus had for his mama and he had for John, he has that same love and concern about us. So he says to his mother, he says, woman, behold thy son. And then he tells John, behold thy mother. Now I'm here today to tell you that you, when you gave your life to Christ, you became a member of a new family. Are you hearing me today? So you can look at each one of your brothers and sisters, look around in this church, and you can look at the next one, and you can say, behold these are my brothers and sisters. How do we know that? Well, we can go to the book of Mark in the third chapter, and Jesus says that those that do the will of his father are your brothers and your sisters and the mother. Amen? So I want to say this to you today. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, get to know him. Because God is not just concerned with your natural family. God wants you also to be concerned with your spiritual family. And when you are part of a spiritual family, that means that you have a responsibility, just like it would be if it was your natural family. Tell somebody, I got to behold my brothers and sisters. Amen. So if I can say, leave anything with you today, amen, young men out there, those of you in the church and online, don't let nobody take care of your mother better than you do. Come on, yeah. Are you hearing me today? Because Jesus left us an example there on the cross, even in the midst of pain, he took care of his family responsibility. Not only in the natural, but spiritually. Because he knew that John would take care of his mother. Now, Jesus had brothers, other brothers. Amen. But his other brothers did not believe on him and his ministry. So he relied on John to fulfill that void that he was unable to finish in the natural because he was worried about his mama's future. 
And just like he was worried about his mother's future, he is concerned about our future. So the question now becomes, what would your future be? Would it be with God? Or will your future be without God? Now I'm here praying that your future will be with God. Amen. Because if you keep your hands in the hands of the Lord, greater is he that is in me that is in the world. And I'm here to tell you that, that God will give you more than enough. And he will also yes, he supply will. your needs. Yes, he will. Never Come on, give it up. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Yes, he will. Awesome, awesome. Somebody shout awesome. Now, he gave you, he told you how that can connect or relate to you, but it goes further. Somebody say it goes further. Scripture says in the book of First Thessalonians, not First Thessalonians, but not, I'm sorry, Colossians, the first chapter, having delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, he translated us into his, the kingdom of his dear son. Somebody said we're in a different kingdom. So what, what the prophetic portion of what he was trying to relate with, what he said as well about taking care of family. But how many of y'all know when you're in a different kingdom, the king has to take care of those under his leadership. So we got a king that takes care of all of our needs. The only thing he wants us to use as currency is faith. Somebody talk to me. The only thing he wants us to use is currency for currency, and that is faith. Somebody shout glory to God. He also tried to relay a message to you. If you're in this kingdom, which I believe you are because you know Jesus. Somebody say, I'm in the kingdom of God. He also tried to convey to you prophetically, if you heard the words, what he was trying to convey to you prophetically, if you know that you are in this kingdom and the king is going to take care of you, then perfect love casts out fear. Because the love that he shares with you causes you to have that same love because you were made in his image. Now, Elder said there's a process. There's a process to get into that point. So how many of y'all know I have to renew my mind in the word of God? Somebody say, I got to renew my mind. See, because we were, our minds were so, I'm saying our minds were so embedded in fear when we was in the world. Amen. But now in a different kingdom, we have a God to take care of us. Am I right? And so now we know, according to 2 Timothy, the first chapter, 7 verse, that, 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 that there is no, he has not given us the spirit of, but of what? Power, love, and a, I say that to say this, because some of you have been tormented like never before with, with depression and anxiety. It is wrecking havoc in God's people. A lot of that comes from what? occurred in your life prior to you coming into the kingdom. Now that you're in the kingdom, you have to retrain your mind, retrain your thinking, reposition how you think. Come on, somebody talk to me. Now, you got to have such an assurance, the same assurance that you have when you look on Wednesday night, 12.05, and see your paycheck deposited. You got to have that same kind of faith that God is going to take care of you while you are a kingdom citizen. You got to reposition your thought life. Somebody say, I got to reposition it. The scripture says, I have to renew my mind in the word of the living God. How many believe that? If I renew my mind, let me say this. You got to get this. You got to get this. There are people that will be around you that will do everything in their power to keep your mind in a fearful zone. Telling you every negative thing that they could possibly tell you. I was around some people a, a, a while back and the, they had contracted some type of sickness and they were around people that saying that, you know, your grandma had the same thing. So it's in your bloodline. So, so just receive it and, and, and just, just receive it. Just receive it. No, just believe the word of God that you can get rid of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. This is another thing about this love that my son spoke about. The Bible said love don't think no evil. First Corinthians 13 chapter. It thinks no evil. Who are you thinking about right now that did something to you and you still holding on to it? 
you just block the blessing. You're blocking the, the blessing. I, I don't know who this is, and I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to call you out. You need to forgive that woman that you had a baby or some children by that keeps bugging you for money. You need to forgive them. Don't say nothing. You won't give yourself away. You need to forgive them. I mean from your heart. And don't hold on to it. Let it go. Forgive that coworker. Let it go. Somebody say, I got to let it go. In Jesus' name. Let's get ready for Teacher Carol. She's coming. Amen. Good morning. The one thing that, that really, really God was really, really trying to get to me while I was studying for, for my message was, and my message was, I thirst, was he did it for me. He did it for me. He did it for you. He did it for us. He went through all of that for us. Now, there, there's a, a physical, you know, Jesus walked this earth. He was in spirit, soul, and body, just like we are. Okay, yet he was 100% man and 100% God. Over in Colossians, the second chapter, the, 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 the ninth verse, it says that Christ was God in human form. And I paraphrase that. So if he was human, then he went through all the pain and all the suffering and everything that we went through physically, even down to the point where he was beaten and whipped and, and he was bleeding and he was bloody and he was bruised and battered and yet he was dehydrated. So when he was on the cross, of course, he was thirsty. His body was thirsty. I don't know about you, but I know in the summertime, I can go out there in the heat. I can be out there for 30 minutes. I'm sweating. I'm thirsty. But he was on this cross for hours. Hours. So he was thirsty. So physically, of course, he was thirsty. But see, there was also a soulish thirst. And there was also a, a spiritual thirst. See, Jesus was thirsty in his mind for each and every one of us to surrender to him. So much so that he had the wherewithal. And when you dehydrated, you can be lethargic, you can be confused. But he had was in his right mind enough to go while he was on that cross to say, I thirst. And that was the fulfillment of the last prophecy that he had to fulfill. He had the world with all to fulfill this thing for you, for me, for us. And then there was this, this spiritual thirst. This spiritual thirst. You know, we spend our whole lives thirsting, 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 thirsting. Don't know what we're thirsting for. But we're thirsting for Christ. And until we come to the full knowledge of him, we're going to thirst. God is free. He's available for all of us whenever we desire to come to him. But he wants you now. He has some stuff he wants to get to you. He has some things he wants to do for you. So surrender your life to Christ. Give him your, your best because he's going to give you the best. Amen. Amen. Come on. That was good. Give God your best. You, did, you, did you get the prophetic message? The prophetic message of what she just ministered is. Talk to him. Scripture says, the ear of the Lord is open to the cry of the righteous. So I guess what God is trying to convey through what she's just stated is some of us not talking to him enough. We need to spend some more time talking to him. 
Because if you talk to him, then he'll be able to open some doors for you. And sometimes he'll talk back. Well, preferably all the time. But that you have to develop an ear to hear. Everybody say, I have to develop an ear to hear. That's everybody. Everybody, myself included. We have to develop an ear to hear. Amen? So talk to him. Well, we got Elder Carol is coming. Come on, give Elder. Yes. Hallelujah. I had Eloi, Eloi, Lama, Sabachthani. And that means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, now we're asking, Jesus was on the cross and he was asking God, why have you left me? Why have you abandoned me? Previously, there were people at the bottom of the cross and when Jesus said that, they said he's asking for Elijah. He's crying out to Elijah. Jesus said, my God, my God. He did not say Elijah. He didn't say that. Who do you cry out to? Your God. Your God. And, and, and one of the things that you need to remember is that you can ask your God. Why? Why? You can talk to your God. I know you all probably know that I love the Lord is my shepherd. He's mine. And when you're in the midst of trouble, when you are down and out, when you are scared, when you don't know what to do, call on your God. Call on your God. Because Eloa, Eloa, Lama, Sabachthani means he will never, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, Jesus was up on that cross. Don't you think he could have come down? He could have come down off the cross. As teacher Carolyn told you, he was 100% divine. 100%. He could have come down from that cross. But he was up there for you and me. He was up there for you and me. He suffered for you and me. And Jesus wanted you to know that through all your suffering, through all your ups and downs, hallelujah, through all your pain, through all the doubt you may go through, through it all, remember that my God will never, never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, give it up. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Awesome. Prophetically, what, what was she trying to convey to each and every one of us? When Jesus says, my God, my God, why, why have thou forsaken me? Guess what? He forsook him because he had all of us in his heart and mind. And Jesus had to pay the ultimate price for all of us. So that's why he had to forsake him. How many understand what I'm saying? Pastor's going to come. She's going to come and give us something. Amen. And she's going to bless us with something that relates because I know she studies the word of God. Amen. Give it up. It's Pastor Ducilla Calloway. Amen. Amen. Actually, I did speak in that week as well on um, It Is Finished. And so I kind of touched up on a little bit of what everyone has already said. 
And uh, but I brought it in from Second Kings, the second chapter. And we kind of heard a little bit of Second Kings yesterday in the word. One of the things that the, the, that the Lord was sharing is that uh, I'm, and I'm going to do Elijah and Elisha just so you can know the difference here as we're going. But they're going to a place now where Elijah know that it's his time. He has, the, you know, he has it in his spirit. He knows that this is the time that the Lord is going to bring his life to an end as he has known it for now in the flesh. And what God is doing is he has Elisha who has been there and has been his minister, has been there on his side. He has had him on his side, carrying him on the journey, teaching him the way to go and all those things. And so people are telling him, you know, your, your man of God is about to die. He's like, I hear you, but just be quiet. I don't need to hear that right now. Because what they're focused on is what he's focused on is, look, I need to know what God has for me. So they're going over and they're going over the Jordan. And uh, I, I want you to hear this, but they're going over the Jordan, which we know that's the, the river that the children of Israel went over when there was time for them to get away from Pharaoh coming after them. And that's all that was before them was the water. The water is always very important. So they're going over and again, they're going over on dry land because Elijah, you know, take his mantles, tap it and the water split. So it splits, and as the Lord was giving the understanding of that split, also, even as the children, when they said, you know, stand, the Lord told them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, because something different happens when you go over this water. He is going over on dry ground, but there's a split. There's a side over here and a side of the water there, because we, here, we have a split. We have the spirit, we have the flesh. There's a split. So when they go over on the Jordan on this time, uh, they're not going over the same way that they came when they, when they get over there. So now, uh, Elisha is seeing him in a different light. And he's asking him, he's saying, I want your spirit. I want double. Elijah asked him what he wants. He said, I want double of your spirit. So we always want double of everything. But he said, I want the spirit because if I got your spirit, I can do the rest. If we can get the spirit of God, we can do the rest. If we can get the spirit of the man of God, God will lead us to do the rest. We got to know what we're asking for. And so because God said, uh, Jesus said, I had to leave so that why? So he can bring us a comforter. We need the spirit, the Holy Spirit within us. And so as they're going over there, he says, that's something hard. But here's the deal. If you see me, behold, if you see me, you don't see me the same way you see me now. But when you see me go up. You're going to see me in a different way because you're not going to see the same way you've been seeing. You're going to see in a spiritual eye because I'm going to give you this double portion is what you've been asking for. But see, we got to make sure we don't see the man of God as we see in the natural. We got to see people in the spirit. Amen. So he said, you got to see me spiritually. So he goes up and of course the mantle comes down. The first thing he does, the first thing he does, the first miracle he does, he grabs it. He gets it. He holds on to it. It's a cloak unto him. But he gets to start doing the last thing he saw his master do. The last thing he saw his master. And then even when he goes up, he says, my father, my father, my father, my father. He recognized him. God is already showing us some of the things that will happen even in the process of our salvation. And so he goes up. He gets the mantle. And the first thing he does is what the last thing he saw Elisha do. He ends up splitting the waters. He goes to the Jordan. He splits the water. He gets to do the miracles because he's been attached to the man of God. And he's been learning. He's been receiving his spirit. But that's not the only thing. Because you got to understand, when you go down, you come up different. See, when you go in the water, you don't come out of the water the same. That's why baptism happened. When you go up, you come down. They said, we're going to let all this stuff go. It ain't the same no more. I'm letting all the stuff that, that, that just, just wash away from me. Amen. So even in your spiritual baptism, I am getting a spiritual makeover. I am getting a spiritual download. I'm getting a spiritual immersement of the spirit of God. Amen. But here is one other thing that we didn't hear much from Elijah, Elisha after that, into that third chapter. And they were getting into a battle. And Jehoshaphat says, they done went around seven days trying to fight this battle because, you know, there's a new king in town and, 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 and the Moabs don't want to pay because Ahab has died. They don't want to pay. So Jehoshaphat said, we're going to align together these three kings. But here's what happened also. They said, we're going to go up for seven days. And they've been fighting for se trying to get somewhere for seven days and they can't. And he said, you know what? Seven is completion. Seven is finished. We need, a, we need the Lord. We need an intervention of the Lord right here. He said, is there a prophet still in the land? And one of the servants says, there is Elisha 
who washed his hands with water. So let me tell you something. Anytime you do something for the man of God to wash the hands, give him some, give him a bottle of water. You better know you're going to be blessed. Amen. So he said, because Jehoshaphat said, oh, then I know that he got something on him that we can get a word through. Oh, they go to him. Let me tell you something. They go to him. So you know how to go to God in your time of need. You know where to go when you need a prayer. You know where to go when you need a breakthrough. Amen. That's why you can't hesitate in blessing. And so then they go and he said, look, I ain't got time for y'all. They go to uh, Elisha. He said, I ain't got time for y'all. Go to your pagan gods and all of that. But then he says, but because God likes Jehoshaphat. He got favor on Jehoshaphat. So because of that, sometimes you get blessed by association. So you got to watch who you hang around. Because you can be blessed or you can be cursed. You got to know who you're hanging around because you want to make sure there's somebody that's adding to who you are. And so because of that, he began to tell them what to do because they've been going for seven days and, the, and, the, and it hasn't rained. So their cattle is needing some in need of some water. They thirst. They need something to drink. See, because when one of the other things, when Jesus was thirsting there, he was thirsting to get back home. I am, I had a, I'm done with this. I want to get back home. You know, sometimes I need to get in the house of God. Sometimes I just need to get where some other people are who knows God. I, I'm thirsting for what I don't know that my palate needs is a thirst and a hunger for the things of God. And so they he begins to tell them what they need to do. Isn't God a mighty God? He's a miracle working God. He'll give you a blueprint when you need a blueprint. And so they told him that just build this trench. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't, it's rain, it's dry. I mean, it's dry. It ain't nothing going on. But I want you to build this trench in the midst of the desert. And water is going to fill up the trench. There is not going to be any rain. And your cattle and all of your cattle is going to have enough drinking to last for whenever, however long they need it until God brings it. So when you're going to thirst, and when you're going to commit your way, command, command, commend your way unto the Lord. He said, I'm doing it with command. C-O-M-M-E-N-D means it's a praise done. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart. I am on this cross out of the goodness of my heart because I love the people. I'm doing it cheerfully. I'm doing it in honor of my father. I'm doing it. I know how it don't look, but I'm telling you, I'm doing it for you. He's doing it for us. And he said, and I thirst to get back to my father, but I know I got to do this. But God began to make a way out of nowhere. And he just shows them how to do miraculous things. God gives us blueprints. We got to be paying attention to what it is that he's doing. And so now he's able to go ahead and have the water that they need. But God said, I finish it's just the dawn of a new day don't ever think it's the ending it's always the beginning amen i'm gonna give god praise come on give it to him amen father none of me and all of you i bind every demonic force and i speak forth the oracles of god lord i ask that you think to my mind and speak to my vocal cords i release myself and i yield to you treat in the mighty name of Jesus. Every heart say. What the message or what she trying to, the prophetic message to each of us that God is trying to convey through her is the power of mentorship but mentorship in the spirit. You need someone spiritual to teach you about spiritual things. And kingdom people are spiritual people. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. And we renew our minds so that we could be more spiritual than carnal. Carnal means fleshly, yielding emotionally to the, to the flesh all the time. Amen. That's what that means. Amen. God does not want that. He wants us more spiritual. Spiritually people, spiritual people know how to forgive. They don't hold on to nothing. They know how to love those that are unlovable. Why? Think about it. You can't see a spirit. Even though you can see the individual, but you can't see, you can't see a spirit. Amen. So when I act and conduct my life in a spiritual manner, a person is actually seeing, uh, the, the uh, uh, shall I say, uh, an example of someone living in the spirit before you. Because I give this example. I was on my job one day. The guy, I was saying, I was, you know, I would come in and say, good morning, hallelujah, glory to God, and guy. 
brother cussed me out. Then he got in my face. He wanted to fight. Hey, Amen. He, he really wanted to throw down. And I already heard he had a reputation of fighting. I just stayed and kept my cool and said, well, he said, say it again. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> he said, say it again. I said, glory to God. So I turned around and walked away. And his foot got anointed. And he kicked me right on my derriere. And I heard somebody say, uh-oh, he's in trouble now. I turned around. And the Holy Spirit says, don't touch him. Now, I said the Holy Spirit now. It may be different with you now. The Holy Spirit told me, don't touch him. Somebody said the Holy Spirit told the apostle, don't touch him. As I was turning around to fight, I heard that. I just walked away. People saw it. The shame came. The guilt came. All the thoughts come. Oh, they're going to talk about you now. You, you ain't nothing but a chump. You a chump. I heard all of that in the spirit. I heard it in my mind. It just, and the, and just, it, it, it hurt so bad that I didn't. I said, I, I really believe you, Holy. I really believe you told me that. 12 o'clock came. I saw him running in the warehouse towards me. I said, oh, Lord, he coming for number two. I said, Lord, I ain't going to pay you no mind this time. I said, man, this guy going to fight. He came literally slid in front of me, crying, and said, please forgive me. Please. He was acting like I was the Pope or somebody. He said, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. That brother got saved right there on the spot. That's been 30 years ago. And he's, from the last report I received of him, he's still a deacon in his church. You about to give, when God tell you not to do something, there's going to be a blessing that's going to happen. I'm going to repeat that because I know some of us, we would have been ready to fight in a minute. But when God tells you now, if the Lord didn't tell me, would you have fought apostle? Yes. Yes, I would have. But I was told not to because when you live in a level in the spirit and when you hear God give you instructions, there are several of you in, in here right now of you that when God was really dealing with you, molding you and training you, you was going somewhere and you heard something in the spirit said, don't go there. Raise your hand. You see all these hands? They said, don't go there. And then later on, you heard about the trouble that took place in the place where you was going to go. God was training you to hear his voice. I mean, understanding what I'm saying. One of my friends that saved his life, the, the killers, was they ran right by him as he turned around. He was going up the steps. He heard, don't, don't, don't go, don't go. He kept hearing it. And he turned around, and the killers, was they ran right by him on the steps. Are you listening to me? Jesus made a way. He want us, as he trained men and women of God to break the bread of life to you, you know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, teachers. He tra They train you so you can be more spiritually minded. So you won't always want to fight or always want to get revenge on somebody. Because spiritual people know the Bible says that God said, vengeance is mine and I will repay. Turn over your Bibles to the book of Hebrews 4 real quick. Hebrews 4. Turn over to Hebrews. I'm not going to hold you long. I promise I'm not going to hold you long today. The day is Easter. I know some of y'all got a hen in the oven. Amen. And I'm not going to hold you long. Thank God again for these preachers. Didn't they do a fantastic job? We got some of the best here, don't we? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I tell you, they are on the ball. Look what it says in Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Once you get there, say amen. amen. Hebrews 4. And I'm going to zero in right there on the 15th verse. It says, for we have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our what? Infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet what? Say it again. Without sin. Everybody said Jesus lived a sinless life. 
Say it loud right over here. Said Jesus lived a sinless life. Say, but then in the book of 1 Corinthians, Elder Louise went over there. Oh, first, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. Turn over there quickly. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. Turn over there. You should, you should be going right over to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Now, before I go to the scripture that I want to go to, because she talked about it, amen, I want to show you this because I'm led by the Lord to show you this particular verse. In that same chapter, everybody say, in that same chapter. Look what it says. Let me say this to you, too. When people see you in this dimension that we're about to talk about here, I'm about to give you, your life can change people's lives. I know people have been in church for years, and Lord knows they don't even know the word. I mean, it's so sad. Amen? Look what it says. I want you to see this. Now, everybody say, I, I'm, at, I'm at 2 Corinthians, Pastor. Look what it says, 17 verse. Therefore, if any man beware, I'm going to say that again. Therefore, if any man beware, say in Christ. He is a what? Say it loud. Say he's a new creature. Look at this now. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become what? Become what? Become what? So if some, if all things become new, which is a process, she talked about that. If all things become new, so when you see me, you ought to see the new fruit. After I've been saved for a season, and I know some people got saved and immediately begin to show forth the fruits of the Spirit. I'm talking about immediately. Amen? Got delivered immediately. Stop drinking immediately. Stop smoking immediately. Got off drugs immediately. Lost that. The depression was gone. Anxiety. Im- Come on, somebody. Say, God can do it immediately. I cannot tell you how many people that came up at this altar and got prayed for and immediately. Immediately stop smoking cigarettes. Somebody shout glory to God. Say God can do the immediately. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all, you know who need to see the newness in all, in all of our life? And that is our spouses. Because they deal with us behind closed doors. Amen. Everybody can smile in church. Are we smiling at home? Everybody saying, hmm, that's something to think about. Say, hmm, that's something to think about. I want everybody here to say that because they're kind of quiet over here. Can somebody go get some pickles or something so I Over here say, hmm, that's something to think about. Y'all just made me happy. I can close the service now. I mean, listening to him. Are you at home? I hope you're getting this. Because people should be able to see the fruits of change after a season, which some immediately. Now I want to go to the 21st verse real quick. I'm not going to hold you now. I'm telling you. We're going to, I'm not going to hold you long. Look at the 21st verse. If you get there, say, when you get there, say, amen. Now, we already read in the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, 15 verse, the Bible said that he lived a what kind of life? Everybody say sinless. Now, look at this 21st verse. For he had made him to be sin for who? Who knew no sin that we might become, might be made the righteousness of God. Where? When did that happen? When did the mystery of Jesus taking our sins upon his body? The mystery. First and foremost, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. I want you to really get this. First and foremost, the Bible said they whipped him with a with a with a with a rope that had on the end of it. On the end of it, it had bone and it had metal spikes. Can you imagine being whipped with something like that? Can you imagine that? The Bible tells us. When he was on the cross, I want you to give me some dramatic music. Everybody said when he was on the cross. Everybody said the cross. Say when Jesus was on the cross, the Bible said it turned dark. It 
turned dark. Prior to him being on the cross, they had him on the whipping post. They whipped him with 39 lashes. Three representing the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Nine is a symbol of completion and enlightenment. So Jesus was up on that cross, but he wasn't alone. The Trinity was up there, but guess what? You was up there too. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Galatians that I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. But what about this mystery of sin coming on a sinless person? Turn to Isaiah 53 real quick. Turn over there real quick. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Turn over there real quick. Everybody say the mis this mystery. Say it like you mean. Say this mystery. We know in the whipping post they were whipping him. We already know what they whipped him with. 39 lashes. Whipping him, buddy. I want you to know every time they whooped him, every time a lash went forth, something came off of you. Come on, somebody say, something came off of me. Every time it, something came off of you. What came off of you? Look what it says in Isaiah 53. It says, surely, he, look at this, he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But it says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So he made a divine exchange in the spirit. You couldn't see it, but it happened. For your sorrow, he gave you joy. For your sickness, he gave you help. For your pain, he gave you the ability to seek his word for the help that you need to be strengthened. Because when you were weak, Jesus made you strong. He took your, your poverty and he made us rich. Rich to have enough to take care of everything. And to have something left over. When you didn't know what to do because you lost your joy. He gave you peace. Jesus took what you couldn't take. Everything that needed to be taken, he took it away. Everything that needed to be taken, he took it away. Cancer can't stand up against him. Diabetes can't stand up against him. Depression can't stand up against it. Anxiety can't stand up against it. No bone problems can deal. He can't, they can't deal with him. He took it all. Jesus took it. I said Jesus took it all. Jesus took it all. Jesus took it all. Jesus took it all. He had to forsake it. So that we can live and have eternal life. He had to do it. Somebody say he had to do it. In the name of Jesus. Take your seats. So you sitting up in here and you have not accepted Jesus in your life knowing he took everything that you don't have to take. Yet you sit. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Every eye closed, every head bowed. If you in this place and you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your life, knowing that he took everything that needed to be taken, he has his best waiting for you. Tired of living the life that you're living, you know you're not right with God. If this is your day on this Easter Sunday, 
Uh, every eyes closed, every head bowed. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord of your life today, knowing that he took everything that you don't have to take, I want you to lift your hand and say, I want to be saved, preacher. Lift that hand all over the altar, all over the sanctuary. Lift that hand and say, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to be saved, preacher. I'm tired of living this life without you. You want to be sure you have him in your heart. Lift those hands. Don't you live another day without him? Don't think about nobody to the left or on the right. The only thing that matters is that I need Jesus. I need Jesus. He's calling you. He's calling you. If that's you, lift that hand and say, I want him. Don't leave this earth without Jesus. Don't leave it without him. I know the Lord is dealing with some of you. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. He said, come just the way you are. He's the one that do the transforming. You just do the yielding. Would there be another that say, I need him. And I can't think of a better day to accept him than on this Easter Sunday morning. If that's you, lift that hand up. Lift that hand up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we got one. Don't sit there now. And then you quote the Lord's prayer. You won't do it in front of everybody. He said, if you deny me before men, you've been denied before the Father. Honey, I want you to say, Father, say it loud. Say, forgive me. Lord, I repent. I know Jesus died for me. Carried all my sins, all my pain, everything that I can imagine. Jesus, I accept you in my life. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. I'm a new creature. And I thank you for it. Come on, give God praise. Come on. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Come on, give him some more praise. Come on, thank God for this young lady. Sweet as she can be. I thank God for, I really do. She loved the Lord. Don't get me wrong. This young baby, she loved the Lord. She's an integral person too. She's very integral. And I thank God for, amen. But today she's a new creature in Jesus. And ain't nobody mad but the devil. Somebody shout glory to God. Those of you that want prayer, I want you to stand. Everybody else can remain seated. If you want prayer, I want you to stand up on your feet. Everybody else can remain seated. Everybody else remain seated. Everybody else remain seated in the name of Jesus. Somebody say he's worthy. Amen. Ain't nobody do you like Jesus. I want you all to raise your hand half mass. Just the one standing. Just the one standing. Father, I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon these wonderful, wonderful people. I bind every demonic force that has attempted to stop what you're doing in their life. And I speak forth the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Touch each and every one of them and touch and deliver them right where they are. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I command every demonic force to go and leave you now. And I decree by faith that you are set free by the power of the living God. And I thank you and I praise you and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, every heart say amen. Amen. Give God a great big old clap off. Amen. God bless you all. Well, I want you to stand up on your feet. I'm about to let you go. Amen. Everybody stand. 
Everyone standing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're in this place and you feel led by God, that he's leading you to, to hear faith in action, to be a part of this family, because it is a family. And if you've been here before and you know the spirits of the people that is in this church and, and they demonstrate the love of God and you see fruitfulness, you see the vision of this house and what God is doing here with the vision. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord wants you to be here, a part of this family. Be mentored, groomed, and matured in the word of God. Every eye closed. And you know that's where God wants you. You already know it. You're convinced of it. I want you to lift that hand up real high and say, Preacher, I know this is where God wants me. I know this is where God, to be a member, to be a member, to be a member. Thank you, honey. Thank you. I see three hands. Will there be another hand that would be raised that's going to be faithful and going to really, really come to church and learn the principles of God and develop themselves spiritually? If that's you, then I want you to walk up to this pulpit. Walk right up here. Just walk right on up. Walk right on up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Walk right on up. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give God some praise? Amen. You know, you know what I love about this couple? They have been here many times, but they join when they hear the Spirit say join. Because <laughs> I always saw them as family anyway, but they, make, they are making it official today. So I just thank God for leading them here at Faith in Action. Amen. And this sweet young lady here has a heart of gold. I thank God for her. She know where God wants her to be as well. And she's leaving First Baptist to come here. Isn't that wonderful? Thank God for First Baptist now. They teach the Bible over there. But I'm glad you're here. Yes, I'm talking to you. So I want to welcome you to be a part of this family because you was as if you was a part, a part of the family anyway. Don't you fall and hurt yourself. That was, a, that was one, of them, one of them praise the Lord moves. One of them. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I thank God for you. We want to welcome you into this family. And I believe with all of my heart, God going to give you what you came here for. Amen. So all of these preachers will come up. They're either going to hug you or give you a, a fist bump. But I'm going to hug you. follow this this sweet young lady right here in this yellow dress y'all gonna follow her right in the back amen get your pocketbook get all your belongings you're gonna follow that sweet young lady she's gonna just get some information from you amen so we can have you registered as a family member amen we thank god come on give god praise and glory come on give god praise and glory come on you can do better than that Give God praise and glory. Amen. Now lift those hands. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Lift those hands. And I want you to say this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Ball your fists up like this. 
give the person next to you a fist bump and say, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.